G'day guys, quick turnaround. Um, we are facing the Tigers at the MCG this Thursday night. When I'm doing this, while I'm doing this, we are two days, eight hours away um, before they bounce the ball at the MCG, uh, which promises to be a big, big occasion in regards to how many people will be there. It feels like this one is a sellout. Um, not many seats or even standing room left. So our home game, and uh, it's it's always a, a massive occasion. I know that I'm not quite sure really how how the modern footballer views these traditional rivals, but from a supporter point of view, particularly our vintage, there is something about facing the likes of Richmond or Essendon or Collingwood. Um, there's always that, that oh yeah, it, it's, it doesn't matter really where they're at, um, these teams. The, the, it, there's always a, a little bit of trepidation going into these big games against these big rivals just because of the atmosphere. And, and that atmosphere can, it can lift a group. Um, and I'm expecting this one, you know, you look at the, you look at the, um, the odds, <laughs> we're $1.33. I think the Brisbane Lions were $1.33 against us and we were looking at Richmond there, $3.36. And I think we were around that mark against the Lions, which suggests that we're going into this game with the bookies, massive, massive favourites. Um, and that's on the back of us having a one-point win and making a prelim final last year. But... I don't know. I, I feel like it's just a little bit closer than that. I would like to think that from a maturity point of view now and a mental, a mental, uh, I suppose, development that we are far superior to Richmond. Um, and that sounds a little bit funny considering they still had on the weekend 11 premiership players um, who played against the Gold Coast Suns. And if they get back Martin and Curvis and Lynch... Uh, that will make it 14. That's a, that's a big chunk of experience. Um, but I don't know. They, they just don't appear to have that same aura about them, Richmond. And there is, from my point of view, definitely somewhat of a, a leadership void at the club. And it always feels like Richmond can have these these games or these periods within games where they are still very, very dangerous um, and a fraction unpre unpredictable. Um, but at times they look really rudderless. Um, and that's on the back of when you lose, you know, some of the, you know, one of the best captains they've ever had in the history of their football club, Trek Conchin, vice captain Jack Revolt. You lose someone uh, like, Kane Lambert, who was just highly relate, uh, um, rated in regards to his leadership and underrated at the football club. And they've lost some, just some, some key personnel in that area. Um, and it's meant, you know, the, the guys, I suppose, who, and I don't like to say um, riding on the coattails because everyone, I mean, the, the reason why Richmond was such a good team through that period is because they had unbelievable role players. Um, but... Just feel that they're probably not getting the best out of out of a lot of the players who are part of that dynasty, and, and it is a lot harder for them now um, because of that lack of that lack of real structure and that real um, that real leadership that that the likes of Cochin and, and and Revolt provided for such a long period of time. And um, am I worried about this game? I mean, I'm always. I'm always cautious and a little bit worried because I feel such a big occasion. This is a big occasion. And although that was a, a memorable win against the Brisbane Lions and probably something we will never see again on the road um, to come back from 46 points, I feel like we did a lot wrong in that, in that early in that game. And um, one thing I keep hearing at the football club at the moment, uh, not only from our coach, Michael Voss, but also from our CEO, Brian Cook, yesterday uh, when we announced uh, a new sponsorship deal. Um, 
that we need to be we need to be a more consistent home and away team. I keep hearing it, so um, I feel like that's that's going to continue to be the theme throughout this year. Um, every week, regardless of what has transpired the week before, the the messaging will be we we just need to be that team that can back up that can back up and let's let let's be. Let's be fucking real here. Um, we're not going to win every game of football, and would it be? We're not going to win. Yeah, we're not going to win every game of football. But we can't be that team that has that win on the road, um, and then come back to the G against the Richmond, who were clearly who were clearly going through such a uh, an interesting transition in their own journey. We can't be that team to come back and not perform in this game to a to an acceptable level. And what I mean by acceptable level, if we dish up what we dished up in the first quarter against the Brisbane Lions, that will be that will be unacceptable. It really would be. It'd be really disappointing. So this consistency that they continue to talk about, Voss, Brian Cook, the players. Um, in the home and away seasons, it's all around about banking those wins, those wins along the way, and not having those those big, I don't know, fluctuation in form, whether that's in game or whether that's for periods of games, um, you know. And we saw that last year. So, you know, would it be would it be a shock to lose this game against the Tigers? No, no, it wouldn't be a shock. Um, because I still think they are, I still think they are capable. I mean, I watched their game against the Gold Coast Suns, and they were they were horrific, like we were in the first half. In fact, we we worked into the game in the second quarter. They worked into the game at the start of the third, and and and, and they looked they looked awesome um, for a short period of time. They really did, but they couldn't keep that momentum. They were probably they were probably too far behind, but they looked dangerous and they looked unpredictable. And and what we probably do know at the moment is Adam Uze is probably going to encourage them to be to be really aggressive with their ball movement and really attack that corridor. Now, if we're slightly off in regards to our to our ball movement, we're slightly off in regards to our you know our our efficiency. Then you know they're capable enough. Richmond of hurting you on on turnover, and they showed that when you've got, you know, when you've got the likes of Dustin Martin, you've got the likes of Jaden Short and Liam Baker, and and a, and a host of other players who are exceptional users um, by foot, um, Shy Bolton, then you know they 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 are capable, and you get you get Tom Lynch back, and I'm always. A great believer of he's been out for such a long time, but he's he's such a presence, Tom Lynch, and it won't take much for him to just get that confidence because he knows he's he's experienced and he's a big game player. And it wouldn't surprise me if he comes into this game and if we're slightly off, um, yeah, he could he could kick multiple goals early in this game. He could kick multiple goals at any time in this game and be a real presence. Uh, now, Curvis, they get back. Do they necessarily... Is that, a, is that a big, big win for them? I didn't think Naismith was too bad against Jared Witts. Um, I actually thought he, he broke even in the ruck, but it was, it was the younger, more desperate and, yeah, a little bit more dynamic... Uh, Gold Coast Suns midfield that completely destroyed Richmond through the middle of the ground. And that was probably, yeah, on paper, you look at Richmond's midfield and you think it should be a little bit better than what it is. But is Dion Prestia a little bit underdone? He's had a lot of soft tissue injuries uh, for a period of time now. He was poor. He was poor on the weekend. Tim Taranto was on and off the ground. He had a poor game. And Hopper was okay, but Hopper's been a fraction disappointing since he's come across from the Giants. Um, and whether they have the whether they have that next level of player that's rolling through there, Thomas Dow, um, you know, 
Liam Baker gets a little bit of time in there. Shy Bolton can be electric when he goes into the midfield. He's really debatable. They're still relatively competent on their wings with McIntosh and Marley and Pickett. Uh, but I think that's that's one of our real strengths now. So that doesn't necessarily worry me. And I can't see their midfield, although we are pretty strong at contested ball if we're on. Um, I can't see them having another poor game, that group, like they did. If You know, they get Martin in there as well, like they did against the Gold Coast Suns. But they were really disappointing. I mean, they... They got smacked in clearances, 44 to 31, and they won the hitouts. Uh, smacked in contested possessions and they had 100 less possessions. And you look at the inside 50s in that game, they conceded 61 inside 50s, Richmond, although we conceded 62 to the Brisbane Lions and only had 49 ourselves. So that's an interesting scenario. You know, like you look at that stat of conceding inside 50s and both. Both midfields would probably look at that and go, okay, what can we do a little bit better? And I feel like I feel like it's not a hell of a lot of difference at the moment in regards to speed. You know, I think one thing here is if Bolton does go into the middle, if Martin does spend a little a bit more time in the middle for the Tigers if he comes in, is they probably do they probably do have a little bit more speed on the outside in there. Um but yeah, that will be that will be a bloody interesting one. And you know the 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 you know if Nan Curvis comes in and plays, TDK has another big opportunity to take on a pretty bloody competent ruckman um, in Big Nank. And yeah, let's face it, that back half of Richmond's is a little bit it's a little bit wobbly. And I don't want to undersell the likes of you know the veteran Dylan Grimes, who's been a great stalwart for that football club. Um, Loston as well is probably not. I mean, I thought he was probably their best player against the Gold Coast Suns, but he's yeah. That's just a lot of pressure goes onto that onto that group uh, there. And will it be interesting to see whether they just bite the bullet and say, okay, Noah Bolter, you have to go back. Um, we've trialled you as a forward. We bring Tom Lynch back in. Um, you go back and just help us shore us shore up that back half because they've got some inexperience down there. Tyler Young, Josh Gibkes. Um yeah. Um I just think, yeah, I just don't think it's a it's it's a really strong Richmond defense. They looked at all at sea against the Gold Coast Suns in regards to their back half. Like their, I like the, 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 the game of Seth Campbell, looked really smart in their front half as a small forward. Um, yeah, and, and, and Shy Bolton's the one, uh, let's face it. I mean, if he, <laughs> he just doesn't need a hell of a lot to change the course of a game. So who do we, who do we put on him? I just, I just found it, I just found it, Interesting um, that it was almost like we used Adam Saad as a lockdown player on Charlie Cameron. Have I got that wrong? Um, sometimes hard when you're watching on the t a TV to see whether Saad had the role on Charlie Cameron for the whole night. Thought Saad had some moments where he made some mistakes, particularly where he was taken really deep um, by Charlie Cameron, but fuck. Anyone who plays on Charlie Cameron deep is going to have the all sorts of all sorts of challenges. But I don't know. I just feel at the moment with Williams back, and I think we're really trying to develop Jordan Boyd as that distributor by foot, uh, particularly early in the season because he may get under the guard of the opposition because they're not necessarily putting a lot of attention into him. Um, a feeling Adam Saab will play on Shy, Shy Bolton. It could go down. It could be Nick Newman. Could be, but you know you look at also okay what happens to to Dustin Martin if he plays forward. I think there's no doubt some significant uh, personnel challenges for us. It's not like we are getting anyone back of notes. Um, you know. The latest injury reports not out. And what I want to do, guys, is get these these previews out a little bit earlier than what I have in the past. I'd love to be able to wait um, for the teams, but I, I just actually don't see us making any changes at all, really, other than Doc 
going out, obviously. Um, Carroll comes into the selected lineup. I'll stand by this. Losing Doc is huge. It's huge from a personnel point of view because he's such a consistent footballer. He's not. He's not at his very best. He's not the Doc of, of five or six years ago, pre his ACL injuries, um, or even a little bit further back than that. But and he's probably not even the Doc of when he came back from his cancer. He had a, a terrific, I think, twenty twenty two. I think it was. Um, but he's he's very 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 consistent and gives you high level week in week out, out across a number of different positions on the ground and and now and now Jack Carroll and it's exciting because you get to see the next group of youngsters coming through but um, you go from being the sub and you come on and 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 things just work work out for you and this is nothing against the kid because he played exceptionally well in the second half but it's ten disposals four clearances and kicked the goal. Um, but he's got to go, he's got to come into that lineup now and, and and do it for four quarters. And we don't we don't expect Jack Carroll to come in and, and put in a, a Sam Doherty like performance week in week out. But the facts of the matter are we don't have Sam Walsh. We don't have a lot of players coming back into this football team at the moment because we do have a lengthy injury list. So he will need he will need to perform. It's as simple as that, but he's not the only one. David Cunningham will need to take his game to another level. Um, I think Matthew Cottrell, although he played particularly well on, on Callum Archie in the second half against the Brisbane Lions, he needs to continue to take his game to another level. Um, the same with Ollie Hollands. I thought his game on the weekend was a little bit quiet, um, but what we do know with Akers, Hollands, Cottrell is they are probably, arguably, some of the fittest players in the competition, and that's what gives me heart. That's what gives me a lot of heart with this team is that we get extremely fit, extremely fit, and we have those players who are just running machines. Um, Young is going to have his work cut out, and Tom Lynch, if he plays, Brody Kemp's going to have his work cut out on anyone he plays as well because they do have some mix down there. Will Kaczynski play? Not quite sure, but fucking Bolter can be dangerous if he plays forward. So Brody Kemp will probably have to play on him because we do like to use Mitch McGovern as that intercept defender. Um, looking forward to this contest, guys. Looking really forward to it. Um, I feel as well that, you know... <sighs> Who will be the medical sub? Oh, sorry, the, 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 the tactical sub? I mean, you could throw a blanket on him. Is Motlop ready to come back in? I'm not quite sure. Medical report hasn't been released yet. Could be Bins. Bins could make his debut, but would you want to have a player coming in and make his debut and be the sub? Not quite sure. Cohen. Um, sneaky one here. We had a VFL game, a VFL practice match against Coburg on... Friday before our uh, before our game against the uh, the Brisbane Lions and that game was played at Icon Park and it's just gone under the radar a little bit. There's no match reports. There's only scores. We're beaten by one point. This was the scoreline, guys, against Coburg at Princess Park, four nine to four ten in favour of Coburg. So it was a one point loss. We kicked four goals in that game and there was not one report given. On any of our players, we know that Corey Durden kicked the goal, Ashton Moyer kicked the goal, um, but there was no mention, no mention of of which of our AFL listed players really stood up in that game. So it could be, it could be Bins, it could be Cohen. Uh, if Motlop's ready, we could go with another small forward, Corey Durden, Chincotta, um, Moyer, Wilson. So we're just going to have to wait and see. I've got no idea who will the medical sub be, but as far as the 22 goes, bringing Carroll into this lineup seems the obvious thing to do um, because we just don't have the options at the moment. So that will continue to be a challenge. But what I will say, this will be, I don't know about huge, but... We get the job done against Richmond. We go two and zip into a bye. We get the week we get the week off, and we get some players back. Hopefully, you know Marchbank. Um, hopefully, can be considered Walsh. Hopefully, can be considered Weedering. Hopefully, can be considered Martin. Hopefully, 
can be considered. We go in two zip, two wins, and one of those completely unexpected, which was the Brisbane Lions. That's a really strong position to be in, to then go into a game against North Melbourne in that Good Friday game. It's a fucking very, very strong position to be in. So this is a crucial a crucial game for us um, after, after getting an unexpected win against the Brisbane Lions last Friday night. Tell us what you think, guys. Speak soon.